Would you like to help your family eat healthier by baking homemade whole wheat bread but are unsure where to start? Taking the gradual approach with whole wheat might be the answer. Today we're making old-fashioned buttermilk bread. It's soft, it slices easily, and it's terrific for toast and sandwiches. And we're making it in the Angus Room Assistant Mixer. Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm here to help you create your slice of country living wherever you live. Welcome to Chocolate Box Cottage, the sweet spot between old-fashioned values like gardening and cooking from scratch and modern conveniences that make life easier. Today I'm sharing a family treasure, my recipe for old-fashioned buttermilk bread. This is the one that I baked for my family for more than 25 years and the one that I used to help them adapt to whole wheat bread. And we're making it in the Ancestrum Assistant Mixer. If you've purchased an Ancestrum Assistant, you have made an investment in your family's bread supply. When I first learned about the benefits and really understood the nutritional benefits of whole grains, I jumped on the bandwagon with both feet. I went to the store and bought a small bag of stone ground whole wheat flour and baked my first brick. <laughs> That's right. Do you have a similar story? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. As I was saying, I baked a brick, or rather two bricks. And I'd been baking for years since I was 12 years old. It turns out a gradual approach to whole wheat is the answer. It's so much easier on the baker as well as the eaters. Today we're going to use a sliding scale to decide how much whole wheat flour to use in our recipe for old-fashioned buttermilk bread to give our family time to adapt and to actually love the bread. Old-fashioned buttermilk bread is a recipe that's sure to win them over. By the way, I've made separate specific videos for the KitchenAid mixer and for the Bosch Universal. So if you own one of those two mixers, you can go straight to that video and watch the video using the same mixer that you have in your kitchen. And if you haven't yet purchased a heavy-duty stand mixer for bread, I invite you to check out my video KitchenAid versus Bosch versus Ankestrum, the best mixer for bread dough, to help you make the best decision. Today's recipe for old-fashioned buttermilk bread is available as a free printable on my website, chocolateboxcottage.tv. And today we're making a family-sized batch, seven loaves, enough to stock the freezer. Make sure you have enough bread pans. And if you have a kitchen scale, go ahead and pull it out of the back of the cupboard. It'll come in handy. Our ingredients include one and three-quarter cup of butter, three-quarter cup plus two tablespoons honey, seven cups of buttermilk, three tablespoons plus a half teaspoon yeast dissolved in two and a half cups lukewarm water, seven cups of whole wheat flour, one and three quarter teaspoon baking soda, two tablespoons plus a teaspoon of salt, and up to 14 cups of white flour. This can be bread flour or all-purpose flour. I mentioned using a sliding scale to decide home, how much whole wheat flour to use. Our recipe calls for 21 cups. A good place to begin when you're helping your family adapt to whole grains is about one quarter to one third whole wheat and the remaining in white flour. So of the 21 cups, we're going to use seven cups of whole wheat flour and the remaining about 14 cups of bread or all purpose flour. We will use the roller and scraper today because they really do function like a pair of hands. Think of the roller as the hand that presses down on the dough. And the scraper is the other hand, the one that lifts and folds the dough. They work together in tandem. Now let's take a look at the controls on the Ancus Room. The dial on the left is an on-off power switch with a timer. Sim to turn it on, simply turn till you hear a click. And to use the timer, just keep turning and set it for between 1 to 12 minutes, depending on how long you want to allow the machine to mix or knead. The dial on the right is the speed control. Visualize it as a clock. One o'clock is low speed. Three to four o'clock are medium speed, and it goes all the way up to eight o'clock for high speed. For bread making, we generally stay within the one to four o'clock area. Keep in mind that since the roller and scraper function like a pair of hands, kneading time will be about the same as kneading by hand. 
Learning to use your new Akasroom mixer is really quite simple. It just takes a bit of a mental shift if you're accustomed to using a KitchenAid. Okay, well to start, you can dissolve the yeast directly in the mixing bowl in lukewarm water. If your kitchen is cool, you can rinse the bowl in warm water to warm it up first. Activate the mixer briefly to combine and then set aside for about five to 10 minutes to allow the yeast to bloom. Well, the butter has been melted in a pan and it's quite warm, so I'm going to pour the buttermilk directly into the butter to help bring it down to a temperature that's safe for yeast. And then give it a little stir and test it with a finger. It should just feel warm. If you use a thermometer, about 110 degrees. Now we can pour this into the mixing bowl. And we can turn the mixer on and start adding the whole wheat flour. The first four cups to get that going and let that all mix together. There we go. And remember you can move the arm with your hand to move the ingredients around in the bowl to help them incorporate. So add the remaining whole wheat flour about a cup at a time until you've added it all. Oops, I forgot to add the honey. Let's get that in there. Just estimating the amount is fine. And now we're going to add the white flour about a cup at a time, giving the mixer time to incorporate it as it goes. Let's add our baking soda and salt. And as the dough gains in size, we'll want to adjust the roller by using this knob back here to fix it in place. We've got it about an inch or an inch and a half away from the side of the bowl right now. I'm going to move it in a closer to the center so we can get more of the flour in. And you'll notice I'm dipping directly from the flour bag. That's because I happen to know that a bag, five pound bag of flour holds about 18 cups and our recipe calls for 14. So I can just eyeball it that way. Now we may not need all the flour. When you make bread with the Ankastrum, generally you'll use less flour than a recipe calls for. And this is a good thing. It, it contributes softer texture and fluffier bread. So you see the roller is set near the center of the bowl and that was adjusted using this tension knob right here. Placing it at the center of the bowl allows the dough to move freely. Well, the dough has formed a nice cohesive mass in the bowl, so I'm going to turn the mixer off and we're going to give it about five to ten minutes to rest. And this, what this rest period does is it gives time for the bran inside the whole wheat flour to soften so that we'll have nice smooth bread dough. 
The Ancus Room really is a functional piece of kitchen art. It has a 600 watt heavy duty motor that doesn't slow down or strain even with a extra large load of bread dough like what we have here, enough for seven loaves. It can take what would have been an all day job and turn it into a task that happens in the background on a stay at home day. Tell me, how often do you bake? Once a week, once a month? When our five kids were home, I used to bake eight loaves every two weeks and freeze the extras. Which reminds me, if you haven't already subscribed to Cho Chocolate Box Cottage, you'll wanna click that little subscribe bell because my next video is called How to Freeze Homemade Bread. And that is really gonna help you with dealing with the extras so that you can stock your freezer with homemade bread. Okay, well I think that our dough has rested long enough and before we start kneading, I am going to pull the scraper. The reason I'm doing that is just to allow a little bit more room in the bowl. So now we're going to assign the heavy duty task of kneading to our mixer. I'm gonna turn it on low speed and let it start doing its work. Initially, if you're new to using the mixer, I recommend keeping it on one o'clock and staying present and observing the dough and how it behaves. Once you get used to how the dough behaves and how your mixer functions, you'll actually be able to just set the timer and walk away and do other things in the kitchen or around the house while it's kneading. I'm gonna make sure that the, the arm in the center here is set so that it's pressing the dough against the side of the bowl and also keeping the dough in the bowl. It looks good. I'm going to turn the speed up just a little bit and set the timer for 12 minutes. The dough is developing a nice donut shape. It looks really good. If the dough is ever rising too high around the edge of the bowl, you can simply adjust the tension knob here to push the, the arm and the roller more towards the center of the bowl. It is self-adjusting. So you don't want to try to force it to stay tight against the bowl. It will adjust with the dough. Right, our dough is done kneading, or at least we hope it is. We need to get our hands in the bowl and learn how the dough is developing. You see, even though we're using a heavy duty mixer to make bread, we still need to use our hands so that we can understand what the dough is doing. And this is how we develop our baker's intuition. So just reach right in the bowl and touch it in several spots. It should feel tacky, but not overly sticky. And a helpful comparison that I found is to compare it to the tacky side of a post-it note. So just touch that tacky side and then touch the dough and it should feel really similar. And another check that we're gonna do right now is the window pane test. So just reach right in the bowl and take off a small piece of dough with a, pair, a clean pair of scissors and begin to stretch it gently and turn it in front of the light. And if you can see light through it, that means the gluten is developed enough and you're done kneading. Now this is best done after a five minute rest between kneading and window pane test. Now, if you were making a smaller batch of dough, you can just let the dough rest or rise right in the mixing bowl, but we've got a full capacity bowl here. So I'm going to pull it out. And one thing that I really like to do is give the dough a few turns by hand on an oiled surface. So I'm just gonna spread some olive oil on there and maybe even just a little bit of flour with my handy dandy flour wand. Don't you love that? <laughs> and turn the dough out. It's still very soft as you can see. Let's get every bit of it out of the bowl. Okay, we've got this giant, luscious piece of bread dough. My hands are nicely oiled, and I'm just simply going to give it a little bit of hand kneading, just enough to bring it together into a smooth mass. And this 
gives it better structure too, which will translate to higher rising loaves. So just go around and give it maybe two rounds of hand kneading and then have handy an extra large bowl. This is probably about a 14 quart bowl and I am going to turn the dough over, smooth side up and settle it in this giant bowl here. And then I'm just going to take my bread cloth and cover it up and let it rise until doubled. Well, it's been about an hour and it looks like our dough has doubled. To check that, we're going to use the poke test. So just take two fingers and gently press them into the dough and then release. Now take a look at those indentations. If the dough springs back towards your fingers, then you know that it needs a little bit more time to rise. Give it another 10, 15 minutes. If the indentations remain, that means you're good to go. And if the dough just gives up and collapses, that tells you that you let it rise too long. So next time, give it a shorter rise. Well, it is. Here we are. Set this aside. We've got our big giant mass of dough here. And rather than punching it down in the bowl, as you often see in recipes, I really prefer to just take the flat palms of my hands, which I've rubbed in the oil on the table, and go all over the dough and flatten it out thoroughly. This releases those big air bubbles that can cause tunnels in your bread. And now we're going to divide it into seven pieces because we're making seven loaves. And this is where a scale really comes in handy if you have one. You can weigh the portions of the dough out and make sure that they're even sizes. Okay, the dough's divided into seven pieces that are more or less equal, and I'm going to start shaping loaves now. So I made myself a little space here, and what I like to do is pat it out into a something like a rectangle, then fold it up, and turn it and pat it out again. This way of shaping will give you nice structure in your loaves, nice shape. So start rolling up from one end to the other. And we've got a loaf. So it's got something sticking out on the side there. So give it a few tucks to tighten it up. And then it goes in the pan. Okay, let's try that again. So we've got the smooth side of the dough on the bottom. This was what was on top in the bowl and when we flipped it out, it became bottom. So we're gonna keep track of where that is because that we want to end up on top of our loaf. I've got a rectangle here. I'm gonna fold it like a letter and then turn it sideways and pat it out again. This is another opportunity to press out some of those larger air bubbles and then Roll it up. Okay. And you often end up with a little something sticking out on one side and you just keep working with it until it's tucked in. We've got a nice smooth loaf. There we go. Well, I'm gonna keep shaping loaves.
Look at that. They're all shaped and I'm just going to cover them up and let them rise. It'll probably take about 45 minutes until they are nearly doubled and then we'll get them in the oven. Well, we have three beautiful loaves ready to bake. And if you're wondering how to tell when your bread is actually ready to go in the oven, you can try the touch test. So just take your finger and gently touch the dough and it should just leave a slight fingerprint. That means it's ready to go in the oven. So I preheated the oven to 375 and I'm gonna put three loaves in and the remaining four are in the refrigerator covered up and waiting for their turn in the oven. There we go. The rack is in the center of the oven and I'm gonna set the timer for 30 minutes and come back and check on them. Soon we'll be having hot fresh bread. Just look at this bounty of homemade bread. Seven loaves, can you believe it? They've all been cooling for a while and I picked this loaf that I wanna slice, but first let's take a look at the crust. The top crust is a deep dark brown, which shows us that it is thoroughly baked. And the bottom is a lighter toasted golden brown. So that means this loaf is baked through. Perfect. Let's slice into it. Feels nice and soft. Oh, very nice. Yes, take a look at that beautiful, soft, homemade bread. Now, for some toppings. My favorite slice is the heel. So I'm just gonna put butter on a little corner here to taste. And I've got some homemade dandelion jelly that a friend, a local friend made and she sells at the growers market. Oh my. That is amazing. Wow, <laughs> so delicious. I hope you enjoyed learning how to bake an ultra large batch of bread today with me using your Ancus Room Assistant mixer. This really is a workhorse of a mixer and it is gonna save you a lot of time and labor in the kitchen. And just a reminder that you can get the free printable recipe at chocolateboxcottage.tv. And also to remind you, that the ingredients are adjustable. You can use more or less of various ingredients and really tailor the bread to your family's tastes. I encourage you to start out with a small ratio of whole wheat flour if your family's hesitant. If they're bolder, you can increase that and eventually work your way to 100% whole wheat bread if, if that is your nutritional goal. But if your family stalls somewhere along the way, I just want to encourage you to enjoy the homemade bread. Even if it isn't 100% whole wheat, it's still going to be far better than anything that you'd find at the store. And you've baked it with love, and that means something. I hope you enjoy using your mixer and that it gives you many, many years of service in your kitchen. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen today at Chocolate Box Cottage. Bye-bye. <laughs>